and the bear is Russia, and the leopard is Germany. The Aztecs. The Aztecs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's what the so leopard, wonderful. Are the Germans just real fast or spotted or <laughs> anti-Semitic leopards? We all know that leopards are notoriously <laughs> anti-Semitic. You didn't have to list the other weird animals in the Bible. He's like, "There's a lion and the wings break away," and I'm like, "Okay, I get the metaphor." And he's like, "There's also a dinosaur." <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I didn't pay enough attention in school. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting seven hundred miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back. Sorry, what? I was just loaning our Patreon $10 million. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and while he does that, let me introduce the guy sitting 900 miles to my northeast. That's my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic. Someone just pledged $10 million on our Patreon. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's back. It's back. Uh, <laughs> uh. Limited to $1 per month. <laughs> And also joining us this week is our special guest masochist, one who we were sorely missing last week because we wanted to torture him this week instead. Also, the host of the Opening Arguments podcast, Andrew Torres. Andrew, welcome back, sir. Yeah, last week, Marsh asked, I presume rhetorically, if you had him on last week instead of me, because you like me more, and I think we're going to figure out the answer to that question real soon now. Yeah. God, Marsh, you dodged a bullet, brother. Oh, uh, well, yeah, so I'll tell you what, we're going to answer that question exactly as we answer this one. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Trump... 2024, Woo. the world after Trump. That's the title. It's the story of how God is very real and he's chosen Donald Trump to be reelected. Yes, he has. Lucky yeah. us. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the last four years of Heath telling you you should have voted for Hillary Clinton, but his threats weren't quite eternal enough. You will love this movie. And, and, and Andrew, you follow politics pretty closely. Um, How accurate was this movie in your mind? I, I think the movie is suggesting that once Trump is reelected, God will usher in the apocalypse. So 100%, 100% accurate, this movie. Um, Trump 2024. <laughs> The Nailed reign of it. scorpion horse locusts. Yeah. So, there we go. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah. Best worst unit of measure. Ooh, for sure. Um, this movie decided to measure events in holocausts. The <laughs> <unit. laughs> yes, it did. For yeah. example, Roe v. Wade is a you know ten or eleven holocaust event. <laughs> <laughs> 10.33, I do believe, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Uh, I, I, I was going to go with best worst background music. And oh. yes, I'm stealing this from Noah. And I am also at present sending frenzied emails to Roger Waters, offering to represent him <laughs> pro bono. And we will get there. Oh, my gosh. Well, and all of the music was terrible. But yeah, there's definitely a low point in the music. <laughs> yeah. All right, I was going to go with best worst biblical America prophecy. Ooh, All right. that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah, right, because we've seen quite a few of these, but they devoted an enormous amount of time in this movie to saying, like, okay, wait, no, wait, but see, but what if the wings, though, <laughs> represented? It's amazing how they get there and how much time they... It was like watching Donald Trump debate Joe Biden, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to give this... Best, best, Andrew goes through the heart of darkness. Listeners, <laughs> if you can cast your mind back that far to 2016, we had a rosy-cheeked, starry-eyed Andrew Torres on our show to talk politics about hope and law and regulations. And Andrew's notes for this movie, uh, you see more positive things scrawled on the wall <laughs> of the cell of the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> it is fucking... Ah, fuck that guy. I'll kill him. 
Fuck him. <laughs> uh, now there's this asshole. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm not looking at the screen while I type this. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got a pile of shit on the other side of this break that would turn Ellie Sattler back in terror. So we need a minute to put on the long gloves. But we'll be back soon with all the opposite day assertions of Trump 2024. Hey, podcast listener. It's me, Eli Bosnick, here to tell you about our newest sponsor, Theragun. You know as well as I do that here on God Awful Movies, we like to keep our ads fresh with skits, characters, and even catchy little tunes that Anna writes. But right here on this first ad for Theragun, I just want to tell you, you need a Theragun. Why? Because it feels amazing and it's 2020. Take a moment. Are your shoulders constantly hunched in terror from the constant scrolling for some or any good news that you do? Yeah. They are. Does each muscle in your body feel tensed because you're literally in the middle of a plague and surrounded by people who haven't seemed to notice yet? Yes, they are. Well, the Theragun is a handcrafted percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. But more importantly, it feels amazing. Imagine getting a thousand tiny punches a minute from a toddler who is a massage savant. That's what it feels like to have a Theragun. And the all-new Gen 4 Theragun has a proprietary brushless motor that's so quiet, you'll wonder if it's on, while you soothe your aching muscles with Theragun's signature power, amplitude, and effectiveness. But don't take my word for it, you can try Theragun for 30 days. There's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with an OLED screen, personalized Theragun app, and the quiet and power you need. Starting at only $199, go to Theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's Theragun.com slash awful. Theragun.com slash awful. Theragun. Because it's possible for something, anything, to feel good in 2020. Minions, come forth. Yes, Lord Antichrist. The time has come. I have risen to my rightful place as the leader of the United Nations. And now the time has come to establish our new world order. Awesome. Now, first, we will establish... A one world currency? Ooh, a one world law. <gasps> oh, better than that. An agreed upon tariff on fruits and vegetables by type and by standard market value. Um, an agreed upon tariff, like tar yes. tariff, tariff, and then the, the one world language. No, you fool! Before that, we spend uh, about a hundred years on European regulatory minutia, and then, then we do the one language thing. Wow, we got a um, hundred years there. Oh, at least, at least a hundred years, oh. yeah. Uh, ma master, wh what if countries leave the EU? Oh, I think those who leave the EU will find themselves very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You mean like, yeah, like we're going to murder them, right? Uh, no, they will have to negotiate their own trade deals. Um, the, They're... Their own and and, uh, and those trade deals will be uh, uh, that that slightly unfavorable on margin. Okay. Oh, hmm. I'm the Antichrist. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on an insane credits fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a montage of scary Barack Obama things co contrasted with Trump looking good, which by accident is way worse than how Obama sounds in their gotcha clips. I, well, yeah, because they're trying to accuse Obama all of this uh, corruption and shit. It, at first, I'm like, I can't tell if they're accusing Democrats of stuff or listing Trump's accomplishments as president. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, I mean, let's let's lay down the marker. It's definitely not racist that every Republican on earth is focused on the guy who was president 12 years ago, right? Who just happened to be, uh, let me see. I'm thinking of the relevant characteristics <laughs> that they're upset about. Harvard law grad. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's what they're, it. yeah, that's what they're yeah. mad about. Yeah. <laughs> but then they show Abe Lincoln and yeah. I was so confused. I was like, okay, 
They're anti-Obama. They don't like him. He's smarmy. He's smarter than them. I get it. <laughs> Abe Lincoln now. Okay, you're anti- <laughs> What? Abe Lincoln. That's in the first 10 seconds. Oh, uh, but... <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> there's, a, like, so there's this... They have uh, Barack Obama endorsing same-sex marriage, and then that cuts immediately to, you know, in God we trust in the money, but God is being crossed out. Or it's, it's some crazy <laughs> fucking shit. They actually bracket it with a minister being like, you cannot ignore, I think gay people should be able to get married. The word of God. The yeah. word of God. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see a bunch of like... Donald Trump superimposed and juxtaposed next to like smart stuff in their opinion. So it was like <laughs> Trump and then the border wall and then like satellites for no reason and chess pieces. Yes, yes, no right. like, I, I would pay all and the digits of pi. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? Uh, yeah, I, I would pay every amount of money I have ever or ever will owned to watch Donald Trump try and play chess. I mean, <laughs> I, like, that would be, I, that. that is my new tab on Pornhub forever. Oh, uh, all the pieces matter. Shut up. No, no. I can't tell if it's impossible to imbue a Trump bust with gravitas or if their artist just failed, but man... <laughs> This little computer animated bus they had was not looking great. Never go with the cheapest guy on Fiverr. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I will be doing your bust for $2. <laughs> <laughs> but then I have to proofread Outbreak when we're done. So. <laughs> it wasn't the proofer, it was the formatter. Yeah, no. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, so it's so and then the second that the credits are over, we start jerking off all over the constitution, right? Well, I would Jerking off to the idea of the Constitution, <laughs> like maybe I, I am 100 percent positive the only provisions of the Constitution that these people could name would be the second half of the Second Amendment and <laughs> uh, the three fifths clause. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another another moment where they're like, you know what? Fuck Abe Lincoln. We're going to double down on that because they say <laughs> the Constitution says we the people. And then they're making a big deal about we the people. And then right after that, it's like not honest old Abe Lincoln and fuck Barack Obama again. What, <laughs> yeah. Why is that happening? Here? So much anti Lincoln shit. The, the narrator opens up by claiming that, yes, we can was a broken campaign promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like calling out Reagan because it's still afternoon in America sometimes, too. <laughs> so often it's morning. <laughs> they, they also do this great thing where they're like, America is for the people. I just wrote in my notes, which is why we lost the last election by several million <laughs> <Yeah>. people. <laughs> uh, also because the Jews control the world, Eli. Well, yeah, it's well, there's the there's also the it's a real hard right turn here. Whoa. All right, so yeah, they, they claim that Trump is the most polarizing figure to ever hold the office. And I'm like, once again, you guys are like, fuck Abe Lincoln. I mean, it's, <laughs> we fought a war over one. Dumbest and worst. Those are the only superlatives your guy gets, okay? <laughs> and while they're doing this, they're like, playing cowboy music in the background and is there anything sillier than trying to make Trump look like a badass? <laughs> yes, trying to make Trump look like a smart person but we've already done yep. that. So that makes look like a scientist. <laughs> 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 We're releasing that report from his doctor that says he's 6'4", 225. Yeah, that's, a good, that's, a, that's a favorite, yeah. That lab coat was rejecting him like a bad transplant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then we get we get a little uh, montage of pwned libs whining about how much they hate Trump. So melting snowflake montage. Oh, I love it because they're very clearly in New York City and Washington Square Park because they needed to interview people that hated Trump, and then they have to jump. 17 states over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, they this is the cornfield some, part of Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they wanted some positive and some negative, and they go to Washington Square Park in Manhattan. So it was like, Donald Trump's an embarrassment. I fucking hate him. He's a racist. And they're like, okay, cut, cut, cut. Nobody. We got to drive out to like a Walmart upstate. Or <laughs> this, is, this is not. This is not working. And then it's quick cut to like, I like Trump. Binghamton's awesome. Hi, Eli. Yeah. <laughs> That's my history teacher, everybody. There he is. <laughs> oh, I feel like this is going to be a lot easier to watch in two weeks. Let this be easier yeah, to watch yeah. in two weeks. All right. So, and then the narrator cuts into inform us of some like 
high level conspiracy bullshit that is assumed knowledge going into this, right? Because he, he starts off going like, it would be difficult to deny that the world has been heading towards a global government for some time. <laughs> and, and this is just to, you know, to cue in all of their listeners. This is where the movie starts playing the baseline from in a world where robots <laughs> rule. Right. That, that, okay, so, so plus one, like I got to close my eyes for a minute and pretend that I was watching Transformers 6, Trump Harder or whatever. <laughs> but it lasts for like 11 minutes, right? Like, I mean, it is. this is a point where Michael Bay would be like, all right, we're, we're, we're overdoing the base here a little bit. Yes, yeah. yes. Ah. So they, they tell us that obviously we're heading towards one world government. Look, in 1950, there were 89 sovereign countries in the world. Today, there are nearly 200. How the fuck are you getting there? <laughs> well, we're going to find out just how little they know about, like, the United Nations and the EU. So <laughs> I feel like I know how they're getting there. They're like, you see how big that room is? Everyone's got a microphone. That's a whole thing. No, yeah, that's that's right. Actually, the way they're going to get there is through the haunted house of conspiracy nut trigger <laughs> words they're like the U.N., NATO, the IMF, the World Bank, the TPP. I'm expecting the Bilderberger group and the Knights Templar, right? <laughs> I, I, they, they play the Convention on Migration as a as a pop yeah. scare in this movie. Like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, no. Uh, they, they're simultaneously <laughs> anti-immigration and also, but fuck managing where refugees migrate, right? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> what? Uh, and they seem to think that that migration treaty was like, we're going to spread out people exactly evenly yeah, across yes. the entire area <laughs> of the globe. That's what they imply. We're, we're going <laughs> to shuffle up and deal humanity. <laughs> Ah, fuck, I got Sierra Leone. I got God, Sierra, damn, damn it. What? You got Austin? Like at the beginning of Risk? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we can't all be Australia. Everybody can't be Australia. This is ridiculous. I'd like to be Australia. Also, I got, and this is going to take forever if we if we go through all of this shit, but I, I have to point this out. They say in this fucking movie that apparently the big takeaway from COVID is that we need less international cooperation. The world's too connected, you see. What? I was yeah. blown away. Because first of all, if you're making a movie where the message is vote for Trump, don't talk about COVID. <laughs> don't talk about COVID. <laughs> COVID is such a good argument for America losing its sovereignty. That's like the best <laughs> no. argument I've ever heard for us not being no, a sovereign country. No, shit. Uh, the, the election of Donald Trump is a slightly better argument. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. And look, I don't want to let this pass that this globalization argument has already advanced right from where these exact same assholes were arguing 50 years ago, right? Like, so quick name, what state does Dennis Prager come from? You don't Hell. know. He doesn't talk about it, right? Because 50 years ago, he wouldn't have been saying, I love the federal government. He would have been like, I'm a proud citizen of South Carolina. And I love the, I don't know, what is it? The chewing tobacco state or whatever. <laughs> <the fucking issue. laughs> yes. Sadly, he's from Brooklyn, I think. No, he, uh, he is from New York, but like, I, no. I had to look that up. Yeah. But, but seriously, like, we've already moved from the state pride yep. that was the conservative position for 200 years to, well, now, well, okay, all right, we have a federal government, but but we can't have a scary one world government. Yeah. We've already moved it up. Like, it's just levels of abstraction, man. Yeah. Well, right. And and so, but that's where we introduced the, the enemy of this film, globalism. Mike Huckabee. <laughs> oh, Jews. <sorry. laughs> you know, Eli nailed it. This is the most Jew-friendly anti-Semitism I've ever seen. But yes, but yeah, we also meet Mike Huckabee here, who comes in to inform us that if, if America isn't special, Jesus will cry, damn it. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, and then we basically, we get or, uh, introduced to our our whole bevy of idiotic, insane talking heads, right? At this point, this is where, like, we basically get virtually everybody's introduction to the film. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the Simpsons, like, be prepared for a series of surprising witnesses, each more surprising than the last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We lead off with Mike Huckabee and Dennis Prager, and, and it goes Dennis down from there. Prager. Yeah, oh. it's like the saddest Ocean's Eleven experience. <laughs> <laughs> Boski, Jim Brown, no, no, no. 
I watched the movies first and it was when Dennis Prager appeared on the screen that I messaged everyone. I'm so excited for you all to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I started looking him up at first because most of these people I didn't recognize. I saw Damon Friedman was, according to his press material, an electric sought after speaker with an expertise in motivation, leadership and team building. And then I stopped Googling. I'm like, OK, well, then <laughs> guessing is just as good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, is your byline a resume pad written by a 16-year-old? It is. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys that says, uh, his Chiron just says, End Times Ministries. His job is crazy person with a sign in Mad Magazine. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but they're all basically here to warn us the same thing that like if if the left prevails, America won't even be America anymore. Ooh. Yeah, Dennis Brager says you can't love something you want to transform. And I just wrote down <laughs> Dennis Brager about America. And every time his wife points out that he should use that treadmill, she got him. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Brager also says we were founded to be a republic, not a democracy. <laughs> uh, what? I yeah. was like, wow, man, you. You, don't you have a university where you can look up those words? You guys don't have a book, a dictionary at the university there anywhere? Our, 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 our founding fathers actually uh, meant to protect against this. It's Article 9, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution says, whenever anyone says this is a republic, not a democracy, you can punch them in the balls as hard as you can. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Little known fact. Take legal advice from a podcast, just like Andrew always says, guys. Take, yeah. He does usually use all of those words in a row like that. <laughs> yeah R other real thing real thing dennis prager really said quote it's idiotic i can't say the n-word end of real quote wow <laughs> you know i mean yeah you can dennis i yeah, just right. <laughs> you can and let's be honest you do dennis. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh. no, no one who has an objection to not saying the n-word was going to try it for the first time after they clarified. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm just, I'm just going to want to let it roll around on my tongue a little bit, see what it feels like. Yeah. All right. So, and then, so we've already met the film's villain, globalism. It's time for us to meet its hero as well. And that would be, in my estimation anyway, Eric Metaxas's pocket square. <laughs> <laughs> that thing had more personality than every other human we saw in this film. I hurt myself. It's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spoilers for later in the year. We might be spending a little bit more time with Eric come Christmas. Oh, God damn. Oh, you. my God. <laughs> so <Heck am I. laughs> Why? What? <laughs> All right. And then, of course, Robert Jeffress is part of this. He chimes in to tell us or to, you know, to talk about what we're all thinking about the apocalypse. Ooh. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is the I was like, oh, he's going to hint about the Antichrist and the apocalypse. And Robert Jeffress is like, just to be clear, I'm talking about the literal <laughs> Antichrist. And I'm like, yes. All right, Robert Jeffress. <laughs> well, yeah, because they keep warning us there's going to be a one world government. And Dr. Uh, Robert Jeffress comes on and he's like, you know, you're probably wondering what's the problem with that. Well, it would literally cause a seven headed dragon to unleash the scorpion horse locust. Where are you going? Where are you going? I have a sign and everything. <laughs> the segue to the segment's the best too. It's like, all right, we're gonna talk about facts. Yes. Oh yeah. The one thing we do know is a seven headed horse scorpion locust and Jesus with a sword mouth, they're coming. <laughs> Those are the facts. So let's proceed logically from there. Yeah. It's a, yeah, he's like a lot of people say that'll never happen, but the Bible says, and I'm like, that rabbits chew their cut, that rabbits chew their cut. Oh wait, I'm wrong. Okay, I just got excited. My bad, my bad. You were going a different way. He also has this great moment where he's like, but what if Hitler was in charge of the UN? <laughs> okay. All right. Look, I know you guys had some kind of a pool going, right, to figure out when this was going to break my brain. So, okay, they got it. Timestamp, nine minutes, 17 seconds. I'm sitting there going like, you like Dairy Queen? Well, what if Hitler ran a Dairy Queen? Would you eat your Snickers Blizzard then? Oh. 
<laughs> oh, you would, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> While chanting white power. Yeah, yeah. right. Actually, Look, this <laughs> argument isn't going great for you guys, you know. <laughs> Listen, we're not saying the N-word. You said not to say the N-word. We're saying white power. You said that was that's different. Oh, uh, uh, speaking of white power, is this it? is where Tony Perkins shows up as well. <laughs> Tony? Oh, my God. Perkins. This is where I started to be like, okay, bets on who's coming up next. Um, there's that kid from the Nicholas Sanders man, the Sandman kid, the, that oh, lady yeah. who jumped out of her house and tried to shoot those people processors. <laughs> A dog that bites. Yeah, the <laughs> RNC convention is what you Yeah, doing. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we also get a NATO pop scare. Yeah. In this segment, <laughs> which yes. was fun. They're try- it's so fun. They're trying to make a circle of diplomat nerds look scary. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like talking. And oh, one of my favorite parts, they do a little like evil typey thing where they're like, the EU has multiple countries. A lot of them are in NATO. And it's like, tick, 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 and it's just typing out the names of the countries <laughs> in the EU. And, yeah, and it's like, they meet in Stockholm. You don't even know where Stockholm is. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, well, you, no, you, you, you don't. Right. <laughs> Some of us do. They're like, nobody even knows where these people come from. I'm like, well, yeah, we do. <laughs> they, have a, they have a little sign right in front of them, man. It actually says. That's the whole point. <laughs> oh, God. But just to be clear, the theory is that Jewish globalists are creating a one world government so Hitler can take over the world or Hitler 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah. And then without a fucking hint of self awareness, they cut from all these warnings about the Antichrist to a Trump rally. They think they're changing the subject. <laughs> oh. And so tell me if this is the argument they're making in the movie because I am genuinely lost here. One of the various crazy hosts of this movie is like, I was trying to figure out who to vote for, but then Trump said globalism, and I was like, oh, that's my brand of crazy. Woohoo! I want yep. that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Aren't, aren't they supposed to be rooting against Trump because God's plan is the Antichrist? Uh, yeah, it gets real hard when you're like rooting against the prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the guy on the other side is omniscient and omnipotent. But my favorite part of this the musing is they're they're talking about the the Republican primary debates, and the voiceover is I was listening to what Donald Trump was saying. Now, mind you, they have to cut the audio here, right? Like this is yeah. like in a romantic <laughs> comedy when you pan away and run the montage because neither actor can flirt with each other, right? Like that there is not a single sentence they can put up on the screen that Donald Trump said during any of the debates <laughs> until he gets to the one where he's like, and we all love Jesus. And that one has an aside in the middle of it, right? In which he's yeah. like, and and you know, and of course, love him bigly in such all the best ways because yeah, it's ugh. well so it would that throughout this entire movie we were constantly confronting that fact that they could not find a single sentence in his entire like his campaign all the years of his presidency where he made a coherent sentence come out of his fucking face yep. <laughs> right every single clip that they used he has some kind of just verbal flub or fucking linguistic fart in the middle of anyway okay so now we have oh god then we get to andrew's <gasps> Best worst. <laughs> it is this really shitty band ripping off Pink Floyd's mother for some anti socialism anthem. And it is quite possibly the worst thing I've ever had to sit through for this show. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I want to be clear on this. I saw Noah's note in our in our shared doc before this actual scene. And I thought, oh, oh, that wacky no illusions. This is going to be some like intricately layered 1969 Pink Floyd. No, no. There's a guy re-singing the iconic Pink Floyd song, Mother, with... Mother, don't you think socialists are fucking scary? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> mother, oh I should trust the government. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> God. It's, it's, dude, there, was zero, there was zero chance that Roger Waters knows that this movie happened. And I, it is my life's mission to make him aware of this. Movie. <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> and I love they have this one of their talking heads, Star Parker. She shows up and she's like, let me explain to you what socialism is. I'm like, I bet you get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Star Parker for when you can't quite afford Candace Owens. Yeah, right. Oh. Jesus Christ. Star Parker, actual credentials, once got 23% of the vote the time she tried to run for Congress and literally almost lost, I mean, lost by 50 points to the Democrat, but almost lost to a perennial novelty right in third party candidate named Nick Dibbs because apparently D's nuts was busy that cycle. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that Mickey Mouse sabotaged my campaign, but if he hadn't. So <laughs> if all you Christians voted for me, we could come in fourth next time. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> uh. exactly. But she and many of the other talking heads explained to us what socialism means taxation is theft god damn it <laughs> that's their explanation yeah that checks out yeah but noah i have a question do they have any like really great politicians from history like universally beloved ones that they quote from someone like i don't know margaret thatcher <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I mean, look, I know this movie is this movie, but quoting Margaret Thatcher as an example of why your thing is right and the other thing is wrong is like quoting Adolf Hitler on dog treatment and vegetarianism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's the, the amount of hyperbole is amazing. Mike Huckabee at one point says, well, socialism only works when the government's willing to kill several million people. That's that's a fucking quote. Yep. From this movie. He wasn't talking about the socialist military either. That's not what he meant. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are we just going to like allow to pass the fact that what's going on on the screen are the worst political cartoons ever yeah! drawn by humanity. Oh, the Nazi propaganda poster of Bernie oh. Sanders going across oh. the screen right now. So at the Obama, AOC, and Bernie Sanders cartoons were competing with each other over which one could be more offensive. I, there is okay. I, I I need your help deciphering this because you have more experience in translating crazy to English than I do. There's a cartoon that's on the screen for only eleven and a half minutes that features <laughs> Barack Obama. And I know it's Barack Obama because of the heavy shading they used in crayon, <laughs> not because it resembles him in any way whatsoever. No, right. Yeah. Dressed like he's in the three amigos. Right. Mm -hmm. He's riding an ass. And on the ass of the ass, it says huge loans to terrorist state. What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, just the Iran nuclear deal. Remember when he paid oh. Iran all those millions and millions of dollars of taxpayer money oh. with, to, to, to be terrorists? My favorite thing about the political cartoons, aside from the super scary Ilan Omar one where they gave her like her own scary Batman villain background, is that <laughs> AOC is pretty. And if you try and draw her not pretty, it's not recognizable. Right. Yep. So they just made her face wide. They were like, look how wide her fucking... <laughs> and made her look so angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's pretty, but she wouldn't fuck you. She's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't. That is entirely the Republican Party's anger about AOC. Yes. Uh, right. When she runs for president, that will be her opponent's campaign slogan. Yeah, yeah she's pretty, but she <laughs> wouldn't fuck it. So then we bolster their point with uh, examples from Earth's only actual experiment with socialism, Venezuela. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Well, Venezuela was a global hegemon until they became yeah. socialist. <laughs> it was the greatest well, place ever. Everyone was saying, I wish I lived in Venezuela. Uh, <laughs> let's be clear. The way they introduce this is a Fox News host going, oh, Venezuela is muy malo. Yeah. 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 It is impossible to imagine a less sensitive way to describe what's going on in Venezuela. America is dealing with a supersized pandemic. Am I right? Huh? Huh? <laughs> And that Fox News host is ex-MTV VJ Kennedy. And if you don't know who that is, it is... I do not. Who Republican... Okay, it's... it's Essie Cup is voting for Joe Biden. So this is what you get when you can't get that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and also, by the way, they have Star Parker show back up at this point. I just have to point this out. <laughs> to point out that the reason that Compton and Camden are impoverished... <gasps> is because socialism. She actually makes the claim that, you know, back before they started all this welfare state crap, it was things were going really good for the black 
community in America. It was really, everything. they were just really killing it. I really wanted someone to ask her which year she was talking about. Just go ahead and name the year before when it was good for <laughs> black people. No, no answer. Yeah, back when Camden was Wakanda, it was doing amazing. And then it's <laughs> fucking socialism took over. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> when they had all that free market for premium, it was. Awesome. This is also when Mike Huckabee is like, I was talking to this guy who was worked for the church. And I asked him, how were things under communism? And he's like, they killed everybody, <laughs> including me. Boo. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so then, okay, so then the movie deals with the problem of evil, and evil in this instance is going to be personified by Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Obama. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they, this is how they present the, the problem of evil. Why would a loving God allow Barack Obama to be elected president? <laughs> I, I, but, the, but the answer we get is amazing. I, this is yes! a, a near perfect quote God gives us good leaders, and then God gives us evil leaders. It's almost like. It's indistinguishable from there being no God at all. Like, wait, 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 wait. No, Lord, I'm going to come in again. Hold on, let me, I, I'll explain this. I'll explain this. I got it. Gay people are getting married. Uh, gay yeah. people are getting married. There's something else. <sighs> yeah, right. So, okay, yeah, we see the rainbow White House and all of that evil shit and everything. And then they show the um, the clip of him coming down the golden escalator at the beginning of his 2016 campaign and they're, so they're like oh you know what? we need our token immigrant right now somebody put out our token <laughs> immigrant so this is where we may meet Bridget Gabriel oh yep. Bridget Gabriel ah. fantastic she will remain turned to 11 the entire movie like, <laughs> yeah. yeah we also finally get Paula White yeah! who shows up to explain how Jesus is at the top of all the Rico charts <laughs> Like, like she was like the movie was keeping us on our toes because I was like, oh, yeah, I guess these are the boring arguments. And then it was like, Paula White, what's going on, motherfuckers? I sent an <laughs> army of angels after you. I was like, all right, movie, you and got then, me back. And then all four of us have the same note, which is she says that uh, Jesus rules over all the governments and all the galaxies. Really? Yeah. OK. The galaxies? The galaxies? <laughs> yeah. okay. Even the ones that are far, far away. <laughs> you know you fucked up when you have to explain baby cancer and your presidential candidate with the same apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, mysterious uh, ways do pop out eventually, don't they? Uh, and and who is, since you, you've got all these notes, the guy who's the uncanny valley Rob Lowe with his shirt tucked out, like, who the hell is that guy? That is Bishop Harry Jackson. Oh. And he explains how Obama hated life, faith, and Israel, which is why America did so poorly under him. Yeah, the only thing about his interview is I wish they um, could have gotten him any other time except for when he was just finished watching an Avengers movie. What the <laughs> fuck is happening? <laughs> He's sitting on a seat in the back of a movie theater as people file out. <laughs> Very amped. Oh, and, and then they come on to explain why us dumb libs hate Trump so much. Hint, it is not because of the kidnapping policies, the racism, the sexual assault, the treason, the authoritarianism, the cronyism, the self-dealing, the homophobia, the transphobia, or the quarter of a million dead people his COVID response gave us. It's because we hate Christianity and America. Yeah, they say it's because he's so good at defeating our enemies. And I was like, are our enemies old people? <laughs> oh, people with pre-existing conditions. Fuck you, crones. <sighs> this is also where we get our display of the radical left. AOC, Obama, of course, and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, those radical leftists. <laughs> yeah, right. My God, here's how unself aware this fucking movie is. They literally use that picture of him standing in front of the church that he gassed nonviolent protesters to, to get while they talk about how seriously Trump takes the Constitution. <laughs> they use one of the pictures where the Bible's upside down. They didn't even bother to use all the pictures where it's right side. There's one of the photos. They're like, yeah, sure. He was just holding it. You know, it's like we misused the word irony so many times it up and left us. You know, <laughs> Jesus. 
Oh, so yeah, it's like <laughs> we they showed that picture. I, I wrote in my notes like, yeah, no, Trump really knows his Bible backwards, forwards, upside down. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and this is where they introduce us to Alveda King. Uh-huh. Yeah. <sighs> Who works for a, a, a group called Civil Rights for the Unborn. <laughs> and she is comparing Donald Trump. And the I am a man campaign of the civil rights movement. Yep. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Martin Luther King and Trump are very similar. They're adjacent because <laughs> they talk about them next to each other in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's literally what she does. She's like, Martin Luther King said we needed to live as brothers. This movie is about Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Trump, MLK, Trump, MLK. So to give you a great idea just how idiotic your shit has to be if you're trying to defend this administration, here's an exact quote. I don't remember who said it. It's one of the fucking talking heads. He says, and I quote, something's going on beyond the veil. Something is deeper than mere politics. I believe it is a spiritual warfare. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, they're hinting at like their enemies are the devil. And then they're like, oh, just to be clear, we mean the people <laughs> who oppose Donald Trump are, are a goat devil. demon who's a fallen <laughs> angel. Trying to play to the base here, a little LCD going on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, was there dandruff on the camera for this whole <laughs> oh scene? <my> God. <laughs> <laughs> that they wiped off right at the end? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of weird shit. Like, where, 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 like, what were all those little red spots that kept showing up in the cartoons and shit? A lot of weird shit going on with the camera in this one. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what. We've got to stop for a few seconds and huff some poll numbers to counterbalance this <laughs> shit. But we're going to be back in a minute with even more Trump 2024. Okay, Mitch, uh, who do we have for our big pro-Trump documentary, Trump 2024? Yeah, really quick about that. Um, why 2024? He's running for re-election in 2020. Well, and he's going to win that one. But after that, uh, if they, like when he doesn't win because he can't run the next time, the world will become part of a one world government run by the Antichrist. Thousands of years of darkness, blah, blah, blah. You know, Donald Trump is going to put that off by by four years. That Yeah. Mm, yeah. Four years. That's like our voting pitch that yeah. he's just going to put it yeah, off absolutely. for a little bit. Four years, yeah. Great. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, we got Mike Huckabee. Excellent. Yeah. Robert Jeffress. Love that guy. Yeah. Paula White. Oh, she's great. Dennis Prager. So smart. Uh, the head of an SPLC listed hate group, Tony Perkins. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. KKK Grand Wizard David Duke. Great speaker. Uh, we got that Very guy nice. who went viral a few years ago for yelling at Mexicans in a Freshen Co. Yep. Awesome. Uh, not Mel Gibson. It sounds like I just described it's a different guy. Mm -hmm. Um a Confederate flag that can talk. Oh, excellent. Not Mel Gibson. Uh 14 minutes of still footage of a bag of horse manure. Yeah. All right. And uh the very concept of hate itself. Oh, oh uh problem. Problem. Yeah, what's the problem? Uh you listed Tony Perkins twice there. Oh, good catch. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit we're going to open up on a quick breakdown of world history starting with <laughs> king david i learned so much in this segment <laughs> so, yeah some interesting stuff happened between 1003 bc and 2020 ad so it was solomon babylon world war one <laughs> <laughs> and we're done Got a Prager U history degree right there. <laughs> and we had the, the first laugh out loud moment for me during this movie is they've got the solemn, the narrator, you know, solemnly intoning. And God said, I will put my name there forever on the temple. And then literally the next sentence of the movie is, yeah, the Babylonians destroyed the fuck out of that temple. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> then the Jews tried to rebuild it. And then the Romans destroyed the fuck out of that. It, but eventually. It fell over and sunk into the swamp. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Our God is omnipotent. My first, my and then first... the Holocaust happened. Okay. Yeah, right. really, really. Your God's crushing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but they zoom from that to the, um, 
to the Holocaust where they could only afford to animate like nine emaciated Jews so their <laughs> concentration <laughs> camp looks socially distanced. <laughs> uh, uh, right, but their point is that after the Holocaust, the British gave Israel to the Jews no backsies. <laughs> <laughs> but, not, but not the British. The movie says... And then in 1947, the UN created the state of Israel. And I'm just thinking, like, did, was I, did I stroke out for the previous hour of this movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're like, blah, 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 whatever, created Israel. Nothing really happened until Donald Trump put our embassy in Jerusalem. <laughs> now Judaism exists. <laughs> to yep. be clear, the history of the world began with King David and ended with goddamn Trump moving the U.S. embassy in Israel <laughs> from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That's where history culminated. <laughs> Just a bunch of scientists trying to make that perfect red cow waiting for Donald Trump to move the embassy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So now Tony Perkins jumps in to explain that his anti-Semitism comes from loving Jews too much. He's like, he's <laughs> looped around to anti-Semitism, you see. <laughs> yeah, he explains that God's promises don't have an expiration date. And I wrote, yeah, that's lucky as fuck because they are constantly wrong. Constantly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but eventually. We also cut over to a guy at one moment who's like, you have to understand that Israel it's like if you're walking down the street and someone attacks your child. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Why do you think this is a relatable metaphor, man? <laughs> <laughs> there's also, there's a point here where Robert Jeffress says, you know, there's a tremendous anti-Semitism rising in this country. And I'm like, yeah, I wonder where the fuck that comes from. He says, I'll tell you where it comes from, Noah. Ilan Omar. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's when oh. anti-Semitism popped up in the United States. <laughs> well, because Obama hated Israel so much. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because, well, and that's the big gotcha. It's like, you know, Obama even admitted that violating international law is against the international law, that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, their point was that Obama let the UN write a sentence in one of their resolutions that says, Hey, Israel, maybe stop having apartheid. That, yes. that was the point. <laughs> yep. Well, not not even that. It's not that we, like, voted for it. We Tulsi Gabbard yeah. in it, yeah. and that was too far. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. We didn't stand in the way of the unified world saying that's immoral. <laughs> yep. That was Obama's big moral failing, according to this film. So then they list all of Trump's accomplishments as president, which is moving the embassy to Jerusalem. <laughs> yep. yeah. you definitely have the i mean they're so numerous they they go without saying no i mean we're not going to say that why are you so many there are so many I'm, I'm thinking of so many that i can't even tell which one to say first is what it is <laughs> and they talk about like people said to him please don't start a war in the middle east and he was like no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's their big fucking moment. It's like everyone in the world agreed it was a bad idea, but he did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just share here my genuine delight that like, Throughout this movie, these people seem to hate George W. Bush almost as much as I do. Right? Yeah, like, right. Like, they're like, yeah, nice. those those damn like, you know, George. And, and literally, like, you get to see, you know, George W. Bush's smirking little face. And they're like, yeah, Democrats and Republicans alike were afraid to do this. And yeah, mm -hmm. they also I'm pretty sure they just saw the word wall. Because they were, they were like, oh, there's, so he moved the thing to Jerusalem. There's a wall there. You know what? That's just like the Berlin Wall. You remember when Reagan said, tear down this wall? You remember when Reagan took credit for all those peace overtures that Gorbachev actually made? This was all the credit for? You remember that? Remember? And then, and then they do like a wall based montage of just yeah. wall stuff. <laughs> at one point, at one point, Trump is at the wall in Jerusalem and he's fucking fascinated by it. He's running his hands along it and he's putting his hands into little cracks. And do <laughs> what was he doing? So that is the wailing wall. Yeah. Which is the only remaining wall of the temple. And you put a little wish in a scroll into the holes in the wall. 
and I want more I than anything. Know. I need Thank to you. know. He what then writes what is. Trump put in his <laughs> scroll. Well, is it? A fear picture? not, Eli. I'm sure it was stuck to the back of his shoe as he walked away. <laughs> Yeah, right. And then somebody comes on to tell us that Israel wants nothing but peace, really. Yes! <laughs> That's why they, they're walling off all the doves, you see. <laughs> to be fair, it is very peaceful after you shoot someone in the head. It's really quiet. It gets, <laughs> oh, it gets downright silent. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> and okay, so then it's time for the narrator to explain to us where America is in the Bible. <laughs> This is amazing. It starts It starts with the, the question at the beginning of this segment is, is America in the Bible? And I was like, no. End of movie. <laughs> oh, well, and the, like many of their talking heads come up and go, no, man, that's fucking no, stupid. It's, not. <laughs> no. it's crazy that America is not mentioned. Anyway. It makes us look kind of dumb, to be honest. But uh, hold on. We'll. No, actually, none of us has anything for you to yeah. Yeah, We have nothing. <laughs> what? Did I say Bible? I meant Book of Mormon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they go down the ranks of crazy, right? They're like, Franklin Graham, will you say that the, the America's in the Bible? He's like, fuck, mm. man, I'm not going to say it's in the Bible. And they're like, Mike Huckabee. And he's like, maybe. And then Robert <laughs> Jeffress is like, yes, absolutely. By name, I'll tell you right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you remember the Krakens? It's in the <laughs> America was the lion with the we bear. Are. What the fuck the happened The doors here? of our face. Yeah. So he says, okay, he said, he explains. He's like, now in the book of Daniel, it talks about an eagle. America, as we all know, is the eagle. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Albania, Egypt, Kazakhstan, Mexico, Moldova, Serbia. Those are countries that have eagles on their goddamn flags. But okay, we're somewhere in the top 10 of eagle countries. But it says in the Bible that a lion will have wings of the eagle, but the wings will be torn off. And that's, if you think about it, like America breaking away from England. Yes. Okay. Is what God was trying to say. <laughs> the lion is the UK here? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the, the world capital of lions, the United Kingdom. <laughs> well, the, I mean, that, that is their symbol, right? And the bear is Russia and the leopard is... What? Ger Germany. The Aztecs. <laughs> the Aztecs <right? laughs> Why the fuck that's what's the so leopard? Wonderful. Are the Germans just real fast or spotted? or <laughs> Anti-Semitic leopards. We all know that leopards are notoriously yeah. anti-Semitic. You didn't have to list the other weird animals in the Bible. He's yeah. like, there's a lion and the wings break away. And I'm like, okay, I get the metaphor. And he's like, there's also a dinosaur. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the, what was the dinosaur? Pretty sure that was Romania. I don't really know. <laughs> the like dragon fossil monster is supposed to be the new world order that eventually happens. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The the dragon <laughs> that they're warning us about is the EUN. They're not sure. <laughs> so hold on. Just, the Revolutionary War is a, a lion with wings attacking itself. That's, that's yes, what yeah, they're seeing. Exactly. Yeah, the okay. wings deciding the that wings they don't like want to be in the face. And they're fly like, you know, away. actually, when, when you think about it, your breastbone isn't large enough to fly. We're not doing any work <laughs> here. So <laughs> yeah. stupid. And again, because they have fucking Bible Tourette's, they're like, and then, and then, of course, all those animals that we just named, they become one giant beast with triceratops horns growing out of their head. <laughs> I, I I was genuinely excited here as to how far this animation would go, right? Because we see the like dragon crazy spike beast things, and I'm like, oh please, I want to see the thing with all the eyes on it. I want to see the animated <laughs> yeah. horse, scorpion horse locust. Yes. Like, oh man. Uh, no. And the United Nations is Voltron. End of Bible story. <laughs> What? <laughs> the singing eyeballs are all the four part men quartets in <laughs> Prussia. <laughs> Fuck, this is hard. <laughs> when he eats the scroll with honey, that's like. <laughs> oh, that's when he man. bakes the poop bread. If you think about it, that's obviously Venezuela. Yeah, so <laughs> so now it's time to talk about. So we, we've, we've covered that, apparently. <laughs> We're done with that. And now it's time to talk about all them <laughs> evil immigrants that are trying to sneak into a America, right? Uh, yeah. 
This section is oh. so long. <laughs> oh, it's and it's so painful because, like, you know, they're pretending that they're okay with legal immigrants, but their heart's not in it. You know, they're like, yeah, I guess we're fine with some with a few legal Mexicans. Damn it! <laughs> they also tell us that Hezbollah is in Texas. Well, t- Texas is loaded with Muslim terrorists. <laughs> I don't know if you understand yeah. that or not. That's that's why that's why Trump's polling so poorly there. The terrorists <laughs> love Biden. Yeah, that's weird because the Second Amendment is supposed to protect us from stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a room, you got a state full of people with guns there. What? There's this amazing moment there, too, where they're trying to like, they're you know, of course, they're talking about immigration. So they want to show Trump's wall. And so they keep <laughs> panning. But you can only pan for like one second, <laughs> right? At <laughs> any one spot. So they'll pan for like half a second and move away to something else. Like these shots are so quick. <laughs> and none of it is completed wall. No, like, no, right. These are the slats that they've built that have already yes. fallen down. <laughs> like, like, yes. This is your movie, guys. You don't have to show it. Trump's just putting his wishes for more wall at space. <laughs> 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 It just falls through the hole on the other side where some guy, where he walks around and picks it up and pushes it back through again. <laughs> they, they also try to scare us here with the 12 million. There are 12 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. That makes up 3.7% of the pop. Shit, we thought that would be bigger. That would be a scary... <laughs> I love to. So like there's this one of our talking heads is a soldier dude. And we know he's a soldier dude because every single he, time he comes on, he's like, I was a soldier, dude. I watched my <laughs> friends die face down in the muck so that we could build a wall against Mexico. All right. Because like he comes on and he's like, you Sorry, know, I, I was, didn't catch what, what is your occupation? Soldier, sir? I'm <laughs> a soldier, dude. I'm a veteran of foreign wars. OK. <laughs> And he's like, you know, look, I, as I was deployed to many numerous places where I was at wars, I've seen walls. Walls work. <laughs> <laughs> they hold up ceilings. You can put your doors in them. <laughs> really wanted a flash cut to a Muslim 19-year-old in Afghanistan somewhere just hiding behind a wall and him running desperately against it. Eh, eh. All right, I will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this can help us out with domestic policy. <laughs> is this the guy who says if walls are immoral, then God is immoral? <laughs> I believe and that I was, was like, Jeffers. Yep. Oh, yes. all right. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> they got one right. Okay. I don't think they know why, but they yeah, did. Yeah. Right. Careful, dude. I can say that about slavery, genocide, rape. Come on. Now. But yeah, but his point is even heaven has a wall and it's probably for keeping out Mexicans too. <laughs> I, I, can we draw down on that? Because this movie legitimately 100% percent says heaven's got a wall and i'm just sitting there thinking like so hell is the posthumous mexico and everyone's <laughs> trying to sneak across the border who's getting and- to the wall of heaven <laughs> what? just joe arpaio next to saint peter at the gates <laughs> tackling people <laughs> well we learned from mike huckabee like there are going to be plenty of bad dudes in heaven so i yep Oh, man. <laughs> that's his that's his hard pitch at the that's end of the pitch, movie yeah. spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> but this is when we cut back to bridget the uh oh, the, the, the good grandma. immigrant yeah yeah, yeah. And she's, Spinal she's, tap bridget. she's talking about her immigrant <laughs> journey and she's like i have to study a bush a two inch wide bush and it's the Sorry. idea two inches thick thick yes the t- <laughs> the idea of a two inch thick book being impressive is so she sad. was humble bragging about a two inch thickness <laughs> yes. book of words that she read <laughs> again h- humble brag does not describe the fact that this was screamed into <laughs> my ears like everything else bridget <laughs> says this entire film well and the message is just so despicable right she's like you know us good immigrants work hard to prove that we're worthy of your basic humanity <laughs> she says us good immigrants we escaped tyranny and then came over here and elected donald trump who rescinded all of our rules about asylum for other people escaping tyranny evil oh. bitch yeah. but 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 biden kills babies 
Okay. Yeah. So welcome to the next uh. 45 minutes of this movie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it, it, okay, so we're, we're you know, we're there, they, they start playing sad, baby-killing music, and they're showing us an ultrasound, and we're supposed to be like, oh, look at that doomed baby, but it's an ultrasound. So we're like, I don't know, is that a foot? <laughs> what, what am I looking at? <laughs> they also, the stock footage they bought is of a woman's hand slowly running along the ultrasound. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I remember they got super mad at me for slowly running my hand along the ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where Franklin Graham tells us that when he was a child, everyone around him wanted to kill all black people. Yep. Yeah, he's like, but, you know, when I was a kid, the Democrats used to get around on the schoolyard back when we had Republicans and Democrats in the schoolyard. And they'd say, how are we going to kill off all these black babies? I know abortion. Right. So they start trotting out that fucking canard about how Margaret Sanger was secretly an evil racist that only wanted to kill the black babies. Yeah. And, and this is not going to be at all funny. I talk about this in opening arguments, episode 283, because this made it into a Clarence Thomas dissent, because of course it did. But to be clear, and I will put the links up here, you guys can put them in the show notes. There is peer-reviewed academic literature that conclusively shows that Margaret Sanger was neither a racist nor a eugenicist. Go fuck yourself, David Bart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, I don't know. I read in the Washington newspaper <laughs> that, and it's a reliable source that sounds just like the Washington Post. It's I got Washington in it. It's in the same <laughs> font as the Washington Post. Uh -huh. It must be a legitimate newspaper. The newspaper's real hard. <laughs> I've read a newspaper like two inches thick <laughs> from Washington. <laughs> and it said Margaret Sanger was performing abortions. Oh, God. And the quote is so stupid, right? They're like, you know, according to the Washington Times, this is a quote from Margaret Sanger. And the, and the quote is, you know, we wouldn't want people to think that we support X. But they're presenting it as though that was an endorsement of X, right? We wouldn't want people to know that we secretly support X, apparently, is, is their interpretation. Mm -hmm. And this is where they use uh, Heath's best worst, the uh, Holocaust units, to talk about <laughs> abortion. Yeah, no, the 11 plus Holocausts. <sighs> well, and they do 11 plus Holocausts, and then they're like, that's also larger than the Vietnam War. Oh, stupid. Why did we mention that? <laughs> Dude, also, <laughs> duh. Do you guys want to say Vietnams instead of Holocausts from now on? No, let's yeah. stick with Holocausts. We're yeah. saying it now. It's, yeah. I think it's catching on. It's also bigger than the pandemics. Oh, so far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and then, of course, the, the, in, just in case that giant number isn't enough to really humanize it, they explain that some of those aborted babies might have been doctors or, you know, really good at baseball or you know whatever <laughs> or hitler cut <laughs> oh shit whoops and then we see like we see the sad abortion video so this includes the clip from unplanned where we see the yeah the baby fighting for it's like because you know the people who did unplanned are not gonna bitch about them using this their, their, a clip from their movie and but it's that it's that ridiculous you know where they send in the abortion ninjas and the <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. this is abortion the video game we're watching here <laughs> <laughs> and just like like Lara Croft womb raider diving around the room doing rolls and shit <laughs> and they're using this to illustrate the time that Trump told a lie about killing babies four minutes before they're born and they're like yeah that was so fucking stupid hillary had to take a minute remember remember when hillary yeah. just paused for a second because of how stupid what he said was my god yeah like right they try to convince us that donald trump has never paid for an abortion that might be the <laughs> hardest fucking sell in this entire movie this is also the part of the movie that made me laugh the hardest one of the talking heads is like, we've killed 68 million babies and we let gay guys adopt babies. <laughs> yes, right, right, exactly. What? <laughs> and if you think about it, this is almost as bad. Yeah, it says that Democrats want infanticide. And I'm like, only on long flights, though, okay? <laughs> There's also a line that starts... In the Trump administration, there's a very sophisticated, I nope, don't know how it nope. ends, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to stop you right there. <laughs> no. Also, they, they have a Hispanic guy that, that comes on here and there, you know, to prove that some of their best friends are Hispanic. <laughs> he comes on and he goes, you know, despite everything in the news, 
30 percent of Hispanics voted for Trump. And I'm like, how often do you guys brag about your overwhelming minority of support in the fucking Hispanic community? <laughs> That's a really bad. You know that there are 100 percent. right? <laughs> and, and, and let's be honest here. The way in which they get to 30 percent is by aggregating Cuban emigres in South Florida who were very, very conservative and anti-communist, yeah. as you might imagine, with all the other Hispanic groups. If you look at any kind of demographic breakdown, it's like 9% minus the minus the Cubans. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and now Dennis Prager is going to tell us the difference between a pimple and a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, you're gonna, how, how does he parse that out? <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's location, location, location. <laughs> sure, sure. The, the fetus is in her body. Right. It's not her body. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a pimple inside your uterus, that's a person. <laughs> that would be a living thing. Yeah, yeah. Ingrown toenail baby. <laughs> What if I get cum on a pimple that's outside your body? <laughs> oh, Ooh. shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Then, and, and then Hold on. I'm thinking about Andrew's question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have prefaced that with Heath, comma. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, oh, God, Jesus. And then they remind us that goddamn Donald, goddamn Trump spoke at the goddamn March for goddamn life. <sighs> right? They, they show the clip of him going like, you know, even... George W. Bush had the sense not to do this. <laughs> Paula White introduces this and she's like, I was at dinner and Trump was like, wait, can I just kill a baby now? Because I have a bet going with some of the other guys at Bohemian Grove. And I would love to get video. <laughs> yeah. And then we watched that unfortunate moment when Chuck Schumer tried to be intimidating oh, <laughs> over yeah. Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> oh, Brett Kavanaugh. George Gorsuch, I will have my revenge on you. <laughs> I wanted Perry the platypus to come launch him in a rocket. <laughs> <out of space. laughs> Robert Jeffers comes up and he says, now you might be wondering what the Bible has to say about Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I was just wondering. <laughs> boofing, boofing with squee is right there after the Scorpion <laughs> host, of course, of Locus. Yeah. He owes that lady's dad 50 silver things. <laughs> uh, Devil's Triangle does sound biblical. So, yeah. So, all right. So, and then one of them says, like, how, because they're talking about, like, how Brett Kavanaugh is coming for your abortion, but in a good way, right? And they're like, how many lives have been saved because of Donald Trump? And I wrote, negative 220,000. I know this one. Pick me. Pick me. Yeah. So that's like negative. How many Holocausts? Negative. <laughs> Put this in a unit I understand now. <laughs> but, but, by the way, music note, this is where they start playing a like major to minor key version of Aerosmith's Dream On. It's so fucking weird. Like, uh, the, the music is just we could have done an episode, I think, on the music of this movie. It was insanity. We also get a clip of Trump's speech at the uh, March for Life again. And he says, Every child brings joy to a family. And I'm like, okay, really? Name all your kids without looking at your notes right now and I'll vote for you. <laughs> Ivanka, that's the give me. Yeah. Don, that's your name. <laughs> Pats. Cum pimple. No. Pats. Cum pimple. <laughs> Melania. <laughs> Who's the Jewish one? The one I, which, what's the one I'm allowed to fuck? Who's that one? <laughs> <laughs> the fat one who's the one who exists because I moved the thing uh. to Jerusalem <laughs> Jared yeah and then of course like every discussion of abortion in a Christian documentary we have to end this with a montage of a bunch of unaborted babies. <laughs> but they paid for the discount package because these are <laughs> the ugliest babies I have ever they seen. Really did show the, that last baby, like what was going on anyway? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that they were apparently they are not against forceps. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come pimple montage would have done a lot better. <laughs> I've seen some attractive come. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what were you guys talking about? All right, well, I'll tell you what. All this abortion talk is making me hungry, so we're going to pause for a quick break, but first let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Is Biden's polling average still up double digits? Okay, how about now? Is it called Trump 2024 because that's how many fucking hours long it is? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the con goddamn conclusion of Trump 2024. 
Hey, podcast listeners, if you listen to our other shows, you've heard us talk an awful lot about how important it is for you to You vote. should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Exactly. But over here on God Awful Movies, I think it's fair to say we've done less of that. Should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, but on this, our last episode before the election, we feel we'd be remiss in our duties if we didn't remind you just how important your vote is next week. For Joe Biden. Yep. Yes, Joe Biden, exactly. This last week of the election will be rife with misinformation, one weird trick, last minute efforts at voter suppression and more. But not only does every vote matter in the presidential election, we have a decent chance of winning back the Senate, which could mean real change in both politics and in the world. Which we might have already if people had voted yeah, correctly if, for if, Hillary more, Clinton. If time, more yes. people had voted for Hillary Clinton, yeah. Yes, Heath, we, we get it. But, but you know, no one's going to vote shame here. I will. Yeah, of, no, yeah, we will. <laughs> you should all of us, feel ashamed. All of us are going to vote shame here. <laughs> On behalf of all of us here at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, next week, vote for Joe Biden. Vote for Joe Biden. Vote for Joe Biden. Motherfuckers. Heath. I mean, please, motherfuckers. That's better. Yeah. Please, motherfuckers. <laughs> if you're angry right now, I love it. I'm so happy you should be. You're an idiot. <laughs> Lou, 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 doing God stuff. God stuff is my favorite stuff. Uh, hi, God? Yes, Matthew. How goes the transcription of the book of Revelation? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So here's the thing. I'm worried it might be a little, you know, vague. Vague? Um, how so? Right. Yeah. So you know how after World War II, all the nations in Europe are going to form a sort of peacekeeping entity to prevent another world war called the United Nations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you know how eventually that'll turn into a one world government run by the Antichrist, who's going to rise from the dead and reign for a thousand years of darkness? Of course. Yeah. Right. So I don't think uh, it says a leopard will rise in the West. I don't think that covers the whole thing. You, you don't? I do not. No. Okay, but but what about Russia, China, and the United States joining it as a consortium against the Antichrist in a trilateral pact? That, that part is clear, correct? Yeah, I got to be honest. I do not get that from... I had a dream about a bear, a dragon, and a lady with eagle wings. That's... Really? Seriously. It's vague. Yeah, seriously. It's, it's not clear. All right. Well, then I guess I have no choice. I will instill modern prophets with the truth, and they shall inform the people. Oh, awesome. Cool. Who are you thinking? Uh, a racist politician, a YouTuber, and the leader of a literal hate group. Perfect. Right? Yeah, they'll get it. Yep. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And now it's time to talk about the importance of character. As though we stayed up drinking last night and forgot this scene was due in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the Oxford English Dictionary defines oh. character. <laughs> they actually have that there. Yeah. Like, the test audience for this movie was lost for this whole section when they defined character at the beginning. And then... They use the six pillars of character. Where is that from? You know, go fuck yourself. But but the six pillars <laughs> That's right are right next to America in the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're telling us about character like it were in a fucking middle school assembly. Or something. It, it, it is. So those six <laughs> those six pillars are. And again, I I cannot emphasize strongly enough. This is their movie: trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness. Caring and citizenship. <laughs> and I don't like the taste. Oh, this is dare. I'm in a dare program. Now. <laughs> I, I, and I'm just saying, I'm thinking, like, are, are you going to mention that he's prohibited from running a charity in the state of New York? Like, I mean, seriously, like, look, even Trump supporters, when you're like, you know, explain his view of citizenship, and they're like, well, he's a businessman. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, exactly. He does not give a shit about anyone other than himself. And like, remember, you guys think that's a good thing. You don't want any of his sissy pansy caring shit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Paula White jumps in here and she's like, I've never seen him throw a punch when he started the fight. And she just means like he tweets about people second, which isn't true. 
But then I, I got caught up in a fantasy about Trump in a fist fight <laughs> with various people. I would like to watch beat him up. Firstly, no illusions. <laughs> Then Ron Perlman, then I, Elizabeth Warren. Oh. I, I I wrote in my notes here. Paula White has memento disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then so apparently, I feel like the the six pillars of character they were just testing the water to see how exactly the opposite of the truth they were going to be able to get away with. Right. And when that wasn't rejected by the editing software, they put in this little montage about how Trump keeps all his promises. <laughs> <laughs> really. Yep. <laughs> well, Mexico did build the wall and Hillary <laughs> yeah. is locked yeah. up. Nailed so. it. But, uh, but there's been like half a Holocaust of babies since he got elected. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's been like a Holocaust lit since April, also. A great people, of entire people. <laughs> Literal quote The founding fathers were talking about Trump when they said men of character. The founding fathers were slave owners and Ben Franklin, and they would be like, oh, this motherfucker, am yeah, I right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Jesus. It's, and so, yeah, they come on to tell us that Trump is fearless, that Bunker just needed a good dusting. <laughs> I wrote my notes. I hate you, Eli. I've never actually hated you before, but I hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> This is where Franklin Graham comes on to tell him that um, Trump made it to his dad's funeral, even though it was rainy. <laughs> well, even though he had to endanger his pilots. Yeah. right? That's yeah. the fucking story. They're like, you know, Trump cares so much about other people that he endangered an entire airplane full of people to come to my dad's funeral for a photo op. <laughs> Wait, the opposite of what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then we get to see some photos of Trump. And his fucking family, which are terrifying. Yeah, the family portrait. God. This, this, by the way, is where Paula White is saying his children are, real quote, again, his children are some of the most respectful and kindest people you will ever know. Uh, <laughs> the nicest people to ever steal money from a children's cancer charity. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I'm going to go ahead and give them that title. I, at this point, I just wrote in my notes because this ends with her saying he's humble. And I, at this point, my notes are just he's black. He's 95 feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like, oh, he has so much empathy. I rode around with him after the flooding and he committed right on the spot to give $100,000 to our relief effort. And I'm like, first of all, like if you believe what he says about his net worth, that is a really small yeah, that's amount. That's a rounding <laughs> error. That's yeah, and yeah. secondly, I, I I will bet you a hundred million dollars he never paid it, right? Because yeah. <laughs> he also didn't. And do that's that. like a sixtieth of a Holocaust dollars. That's like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, but of course. <laughs> If you want to complete the Triforce of crazy power, you need Tony Perkins, <laughs> Paula White, and the My, My Pillow, Pillow Guy. guy. <laughs> Did you know Donald Trump is the only leader who could make the pillow industry thrive like it is right now? <laughs> he's, he's the most, and I quote, he's the most praying president we've ever had. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> he works... 21 hours a day. I just, dude, we were <laughs> inches away from he doesn't have an asshole and he once shot an 18 in a game of golf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was amazing. He's like, he's like, ask yourself, how did Trump beat up ISIS? Um, He did. I know that you, you don't want me to ask. Okay. You didn't say answer. Okay. My bad. My bad. Misread the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can, can we talk about one more thing from this section? Oh, absolutely. When he, he defeated ISIS, one of the compliments he gets here is that he went to the military leaders and he was like, what do you guys need in material? And what do you guys need in rules of engagement? Thank changing? you. <laughs> war crimes. War what do you crimes. need in war crimes? <laughs> what war crimes will I have to overlook for you to get the job done? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That was the argument. He deregulated all the red tape of war <laughs> <laughs> because he's an awesome libertarian president. Yeah. Oh. I guess they couldn't get that sawed the head off of a person he murdered soldier in for this doc. He was too busy. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. So now we're going to talk about the fact that Trump is the very embodiment of immorality 
in every possible fucking way. Or as Republicans put it, I don't like some of his tweets. Poe Buddy's <laughs> nerfect. They have, this is a documentary dedicated to why Christians should vote for Donald Trump. And they are going to, well, they're not going to close with it, but they're, one of their hard home run hits is going to be Poe Buddy's nerfing. <laughs> Yeah, well, well they, they actually spend a considerable amount of time saying, like, now I know he swears. <laughs> <laughs> so, but first they, they say, well, you know, I, there's been a lot of accusations. But if you think about it, everybody says that everybody on Twitter is a racist, homophobic, xenophobic bigot who tried to bribe the president of Ukraine with military aid. People say that all the time. It's nothing <laughs> to be. Yeah, I've never been accused of racism on Twitter. I just I wonder why it is that I never have that problem. I they? think the argument of, look, you're going to be insulted on Twitter, vote Trump, is kind of a weird sales pitch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what about King David? He killed a lady's husband so he could fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> what point do I think I am making? Vote for King David? <laughs> yeah, look, look at King David is something I've heard way too much in the last four years. I just, consider for a second how terrifying that argument is, right? Like, step away from the humor. There is literally no atrocity that could not be justified with that argument, especially if we're comparing people to Old Testament leaders as justification here. Yep. And to prove your point, the movie will now hard cut to Randall Terry, a literal attempted murderer, right? Like yep. this is this is somebody who, if there was any justice in the world, would be in jail for the rest of his life. Like I did, did brain not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but like Metaxas comes out and he's like, you know, I know he's a little rough around the edges, but sometimes moral leaders are a bunch of pussies that can't get her done, and you don't want that. You want to you want a tough guy, right? All right, that that bubble in my aneurysm has dissipated. New one is coming up, <laughs> but until that comes out, Terry says we're all flawed, right? And he then doesn't say. I mean, I literally advocate killing human beings in order to stop <laughs> abortion. So maybe I'm not the best comparison, but like this is <laughs> this is the ethical relativist part of the program that like you might want to remind the next Christian apologist talking about how only God favors objective morality, right? Like it's the yeah, yeah, we're all if you think about it, we all kind of suck, so who cares, right? Like, <laughs> right, yeah, no, no. Like I I've looked at women with lust, you've committed great atrocities that have cost the lives of hundreds of thousands yeah. of people. Yes, yeah, it's, it's tomato tomato <laughs> i just love that this whole segment was a concession statement in their movie about <laughs> trump being awesome they had to put a whole thing in about a whole bunch of these people being like yeah okay well he's i mean he obviously doesn't have one of the highest iqs that was insane and you know murder and you know, no they they have a concession statement yeah. in their <laughs> in their about pro trump. trump movie this is also where <laughs> Paula White says people who judge Trump don't know him. And I just wrote in my notes, except his sister or his lawyer or his daughter, or everyone he's ever his worked niece. with. Yeah, right. Guy who <laughs> ghost wrote his book. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then Eric Metaxas says, All right, okay, no, granted, granted. But uh, JFK brought hookers into the White House. Why why aren't you bitching about it? he was bad? JFK was bad. That sounds so much better. I would I would be a borderline Trump voter if the only thing he had done for four years is bring hookers into the White House. Ah, oh. All right, but yes, but now we, we cut in to remind everybody that Walter's friends didn't die face down in the muck so you could vote for Joe fucking Biden, right? <laughs> It's 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 what the, it, somebody comes on and goes like it's not enough to pray and I'm like you know I don't push back on that very often <laughs> yeah yeah well don't don't they give away the fucking game there they're like look I know we have told you you have a direct line of communication to the all powerful creator of the universe <laughs> but, in but we instance, are gonna need you to pull that lever <laughs> you gotta also use paper and pen for this thing it's it's also real stuff we have black or blue. Pan. <laughs> and the message here is God has definitely, positively, probably ordained the outcome of this election unless you vote for Biden. 
Like I, oh. yeah, right, right, yeah, exactly. Well, and then so so they they have to tell us, you know, if you think about it, America is a Christian nation and was founded as a Christian nation. Let's just look at one of our most important founding documents, the Mayflower Compact <laughs> of sixteen twenty. <1620. laughs> we couldn't deal with the modern liberal shit in the Constitution. Do we have anything <laughs> a little more conservative? Can, can we double down on like the one guy who was kind of a founding father who was also super Christian too? Like, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. What did Cotton and Increase Mather think about this? <laughs> All right, a lot of witch stuff. Chris, I said Christian right here. It says yep. Christian. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah, but but Dennis Prager ensures us that God will be very angry if we don't w vote for Trump. He says. God will ask you why you didn't vote for Trump in 2020. Yes. Can, can we just, like, can I doodly do so we can play out how this is supposed to work, right? Like, <laughs> God's fucking omniscient. What's up? He's going to be like, you know. Hey, Andrew. I got a little puzzle. God. Um, <laughs> why didn't you vote for Donald Trump in 2020? You know. You know why. You know yeah. everything. Yeah. Come on is a good answer. <laughs> Yeah, so if Franklin Graham comes on, he's like, you know, sooner or later, a secularist is going to win, and then they're going to... And he says, literally, they're going to come after us. Yeah, Franklin Graham, we're after you. Someone in the world wants you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also think you're burying the lead a little bit there, right? Like, that's Franklin Graham saying sooner or later a secular is just going to win. And then I was like, oh, right, because Obama was a Muslim guy. Right, yeah, <laughs> right, uh. yeah exactly. <laughs> Robert Jeffers tells us the Democrats are godless. I'm like, stop teasing me, Bobby. Don't yeah. tease me like that, man. <laughs> and Mike Huckabee tells us that the darkest day in our country's history <laughs> was the Oberg Jafel ruling. Yeah. In our country's yep. history, yeah. in the Dred history of America. Yeah. Dred Scott was a two. <laughs> Korematsu, that's in the top ten somewhere. <laughs> right, but the very worst, Jesus Christ. They stole the word marriage. Stole it. We owned it. They stole our word. Oh, yeah. and, they're, and they're like, and if you think about it, they're all the way up to the T in LGBTQ. Now they're, they're adding extra letters just so they can give more people rights. <laughs> <laughs> but then they explain that, you know, the real problem here is that if Biden wins, he's going to appoint a bunch of abortion judges. Oh, I wrote in my notes. Fingers crossed, buddy. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I love it just because they knew apparently that we we're going to have Andrew guest on this episode. One of them says, you know, someday maybe we'll even get a conservative Christian activist judge. I, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the exact words are. Well, you know, if the court can legislate from the left, they can legislate from the right. And I'm like, well, shit, thanks for saying the quiet part out loud. My work <laughs> here's done. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this movie is basically like it's closing pitches. You know, if you think about it, it's about time that Christians had a say in American <laughs> government. What the fuck are you doing? They're like, what would be great is if some Christians ran for office. Like, who the fuck do you think is there now? <laughs> Well, I have a dream speech about saying Merry Christmas one day. <laughs> yes, yes. God, Trump has the audacity to say Merry Christmas. Little white boys and little white girls will say Merry Christmas one day. <laughs> and they'll get cups at Starbucks that say that. I have a dream. The, the girls won't say it until they've been spoken to first. But. Well, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then this Catholic guy comes on to say that, like, Jesus is going to be real, real mad at us if we vote for Biden. Just, you know, would you vote to murder Jesus? Because that's what you're doing. If you, if you vote for Joe Biden. If you vote for Joe Biden, you're crucifying Jesus Christ. They actually said that. Yep. And I was like, I helped crucify Jesus yeah. by mail. I did it by mail. <laughs> Fuck you. I mean, shouldn't they want that? I mean, that was part of God's plan, right? Yeah, all, right, yeah. right. I thought it was weird that they gave me a little stigmata to color in, but yeah, oh. no, it was. It worked out. Yeah, I have <laughs> such an idea. Once we get off this call for the next scathing <laughs> atheist coloring book, yeah, <laughs> Angelo. By the way, did you know I had to put more than seventy cents worth of postage on my ballot to get it to show up? Fucking amazing. So, so inconvenient. Yeah, it's free in a few states, but it's like double stamps in some states, so like weird. Ohio. 
I can't believe I, I'm surprised you even voted. Honestly, yeah. Given given all those hoops. What are you made of money? <laughs> <laughs> There's also this bizarre moment, right, where one of them comes up and he says, you know, there are 65 million self-identified evangelicals. Imagine if all of them voted. I'm like, yeah, you'd get like way less than the majority of a low turnout election. That's what you they do. Yeah, right. You already yeah, right. have that, you fucking idiot. We got like 10 holocausts worth of power. We got to harness it. <laughs> All right. I see. I see how now if we sometimes use it like that, it's a bad. It sounded weird when I said that that way. He says half of them aren't registered to vote. And I was like, God, please be less registered to vote. It was so weird to be watching a movie and being like, oh, you got better stuff to do than vote. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what if you just prayed? You could pray. pray. Just stay in a closet. Don't you guys have a closet thing? It's just a closet. Stay there. So he's like, oh, you know, Trump wants to keep America healthy. And I'm like, I tell you that because it's not obvious looking at him. You wouldn't know that. But uh, he does. He just secretly, secretly. Oh, God. And to let you know, like keeping in mind that we're at the end of this movie, right? They're making their closing pitch. At one point, one guy says, and I fucking quote, you have to vote for either righteousness or don't say unrighteousness. Yep. Oh, damn. What's the. I'm getting out of this. Left. Parachute. Leftiousness. Is it leftiousness? <laughs> and all right. So then the narrator cuts it. He's going to make his final pitch. He says, We live. In... This is such hyperbolic bullshit. Okay. He goes, We live in the greatest country that has ever existed. (laughs) Snapped off eagle wings of America. (laughs) That's like a, it's such a stupid, that's like a third grader thing. The greatest, it's the greatest country that ever existed in the whole wide world. (laughs) And he immediately conflicts it. He's like, we are the greatest country in the history of the world. We killed 68 million babies. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> they let the gays in. <laughs> so, you guys, my notes at the end of this just break down. It's like, if we don't America, we might not freedom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> oh, you know, what's a fun little stat I just realized. We've killed slightly more babies than there are evangelicals. We're winning by like three million. (laughs) Like half half a Holocaust. Holocaust. (laughs) (laughs) And see, you guys, you guys are focused on the voiceovers, which are terrifying. I was a little bit focused on the uh, Lenny Reifenstahl cinematography here. Sure, um, sure. Which was, which was slightly challenging given, you know, you have a big, fat, orange moron game show host that you're trying to make triumph of the will about. But like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> These like inspiring cuts they use for the third time in the movie, they use the scene of Donald Trump hugging the flag and smirking like, that's our, right? Like, that was a yeah. Rachel Maddow clip, right? Like, that's... Right. Oh. <laughs> so they, and, then, and then they brag about their website that doesn't yeah. have a .com at the end. Okay. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> this website is available for $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Patreon gold. <laughs> I will buy this website. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, yeah, they're like, please go to the website. Where you're already watching this. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> I, did they think this was going to get like a, a worldwide theatrical release or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think they might still think that, Andrew. So, By the way, for $300, we could get an official license to show this to 1,000 or more people. And we get... T- <laughs> 12 free DVD copies to sell at our event. Oh. And that's the thing they do. And two cassettes and eight track. (laughs) (laughs) What, no beta? Beta Max. I will I will tell you this because I was terrified. I still am. Like I used I used one of my like minor credit cards that I never use for any other thing in signing up on this website to stream this movie. But first, I definitely 100% tried to torrent this shit and like it is nowhere like literally we may be the only three people that have ever seen this movie (laughs) Pirate Bay was like fuck you man fuck you yeah (laughs) Uh, which of us did Andrew forget about 
I have it on good authority that someone has stolen this movie and put it on Pirate Bay since then, Andrew. So <laughs> never you fear. Sometimes you are the hero America <laughs> needs, Eli Bosnick. Oh, so, okay, so the movie ends. No, it doesn't. No. Got ya. God, the movie comes back in and goes, oh, 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 and another thing. No, 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 fucking no. We faded to black unless Matthew Broderick is coming out of the bathroom. This movie is fucking over and I'm done. This isn't an oh. Avengers flick. I'm not watching to the end of the credits. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, but the fucking narrator comes on and he's like, you know, well, I got you here. I might as well read you the last panel of a chick track. So. <laughs> Who? Who do they think is watching this movie right? yes. besides us that is not already a Christian? <laughs> James Lindsay? Who yeah. is watching this? <laughs> so Mike Huckabee gives us the altar call at this uh, time. <laughs> oh, I was oh. moving so hard for Sarah to show up at some point. <laughs> I I nice. so just just nice. munching in the backyard. Where are my chips? <laughs> God damn it. We got to retake that again. <laughs> Oh, dude, how could we explain that God has a plan for me? I've got to say, it's a convoluted fucking plan. <laughs> and and then and then he points out, like, just in case, like, we managed to get through this entire movie without realizing the fundamental flaw with Christian theology. Mike Huckabee lays it out for us. Yeah. He goes, you know, a lot of good people won't get into heaven, and a lot of bad people will. Yeah, I'm like, well, this heaven place sounds pretty fucking awful. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. I'm not going there. I mean, they make you read a two inch thick book to get in and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. If you're watching this movie, you fucking suck. But don't worry. <laughs> we literally have an entire religion based around last minute. You fucking suck trade outs. So <laughs> <laughs> jump on board and thinking, oh, watching Franklin Graham do a half ass altar call at the end of this movie where they were like, and you'll do one for us, won't you, Franklin? He's like, yeah. Um, ah, God damn it. Okay. Just say, uh, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and stuff. <laughs> Please don't use yeah. this in other clips. This is uh, this is my thing. Don't don't make me do a catchphrase. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Franklin Graham. He wants to pray with us about how naughty we've been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Andrew, I can't thank you enough. I, I, and I, I mean that both as an expression of gratitude and as a mathematically provable statement. Yeah. But if our listeners <laughs> wanted to hear more from you, where should they go to do that? Well, they could go to the Opening Arguments podcast. But also, I want to plug that on Tuesday night, on election night from 8 to 10, we're going to do a live stream. So head on over to our YouTube channel. Just look for Opening Arguments and... uh Join us live as the returns come in, knowing that there will never be a Trump 2024. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. And uh, and I, by the way, I'm going to be doing our uh, listeners the favor of staying the fuck off of the Internet altogether that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But stay in the state of Georgia. We saw what happened four years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. So that's going to do it for our review of Trump 2024 uh, and Eli's whole Frightstable or whatever he calls it. Spectacular. And that's that's not going to do it for the episode yet, though, because we still need to wrap something around the ads for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, as we've mentioned once or twice on this episode, next week is Election Day. And when you're not watching the opening arguments live stream, which you absolutely should from 8 to 10 p.m., you might need something a little gentle, something to take your mind off it. So I've got a treat that I've saved for a while. It's a black exploitation. Devil Kung Fu movie, <laughs> Petey Wheatstraw. <gasps> oh, why couldn't you have me on for that one? <laughs> That's what a mean thing for us to make Andrew sit through. <laughs> I have seen Petey Wheatstraw. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 271 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Andrew Torres for suffering alongside us today, and a perhaps even a huger thanks to the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by telling all your friends about the show and sharing it on your social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skin, The ADS, Citation, Needed, D&D, Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are Provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotty. We will dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Boston, Common Illusions, promise to work harder on another straight next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Common Core Math is scary because 
people are stupid. And it went on to get replaced in public schools by Prager University videos. <laughs> That's a real thing that happened. Roger Waters sued the ever-loving shit out of the producers of this movie and now has the $19.91 that the four of us have spent <laughs> <laughs> to rent it. And, and I feel better about that. <laughs> you went out and voted for Joe Biden next week, who won the election. And this episode stayed funny because <laughs> we don't say things like that and put it into ether until it's actually happened. Eli, thank you. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.